Hello everyone, welcome back to Forex Signals TV. This week, the How to Trade in Forex Signals team will share three things that you need to do to prepare for trading in 2023. Analysts Nick Quinn, Connor Woods, and me, Shane Vernier, will cover three areas vital to your performance in the new year. Also, we'll give you a heads up on the premier markets to watch for Q1 2023. Now, the end of the year is a great time to revisit your financial objectives. For active traders, this means profitability. So what is a legitimate profitability goal? Well, that depends on your available time, capital, and aptitude. However, deciding on an acceptable annual percentage return is a great place to begin. Generally, institutions and venture capitalists view a yearly 8% return as being acceptable. Active traders may aim for a higher return due to the added risk of short-term trading. In fact, many traders aspire to earn an average of 1% per month or 12% annually. Now, if you're having trouble deciding on a profit target for 2023, 12% is a solid starting point. And while you may earn more or less over the course of the coming year, 1% monthly is certainly attainable regardless of your trading style or your favorite market. All right, let's check in with Connor Woods and get his advice on how to identify and move on from your biggest mistakes of 2022. Another way you can best prepare for 2023 is to address your mistakes. Now you may need a pen and post-it note for this one. Alternatively, you could just use a notepad on your computer like I've done behind me. Now let me explain exactly what I mean. People in everyday life, they tend to ignore the things they've done wrong and just focus on what they've done right. Now that's not me saying that you shouldn't focus on what you've done right, but a really, really powerful habit to get into is to write down your biggest flaws of the year so you can combat them in 2023. Now, every day you get to your desk to trade, it's gonna be there as a constant reminder to you of what not to do, and it's tailored to just you only. For example, you may be able to see uh, the notepad I have behind me, and my typical uh, trading errors that I've made this year would be uh, trading in quiet times. So I've said to avoid trading in quiet times, because I did this in the summer months leading up to August when it was really quiet. Also, don't overtrade as I was in winning positions and by adding more trades to my account, sometimes I didn't get the full benefit um, of those winning trades because I had other trades canceling them out. And finally, I have sticking to the daily and the four hour chart as sometimes I was caught out on five minute charts, which really doesn't suit my style. Whatever yours are, write them down and that will be a, a sign to you that you can tackle them head first next year and you'll be a much better trader for it. Let's take a look at my favorite market for 2023. So my market of the year to look out for in 2023 is the NASDAQ 100, the US 100. I'm on the chart right now. I'm on the daily time frame. And the reason I'm, in, I'm looking at this market so closely is because it provides great opportunities when we get these bear market rallies. Now if you get my drawings back up on the chart now so we can really see what exactly what's going on. When we look at what's happened in 2022, we can see that Along the way of this, this run that we've had to the downside, we've had these bear market rallies along the way, 14%, 6.7%, most recently 21%, and, and so on, you get the gist. So every time the market's rallied like this, it's been a really, really good opportunity to fade. Now, I'm looking at the tech sector layoffs coming into play uh, next year, and obviously US 100 is, is particularly weighted in that tech sector. So what I'm looking for, is these yearly lows that we have at uh, 10,442 to be taken out next year. Probably uh, I'm looking for it in Q1 of next year. When we look at the price action that we've seen, the market did try and rally here off the back of a softer CPI inflation print. We actually just run really kind of into the 200 day moving average, but more importantly into this imbalance level here and we snapped back lower and we grabbed this liquidity here as well. And then we've had one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive um, downside days as a result. When I look at the weekly chart, you'll be able to see the clear levels that I'll be looking for. We're now trading below this 200 weekly moving average, which is a big, big deal. The last time um, that we had that situation would have been uh, during those COVID months. So for me, I'm looking for at least 10,000 uh, to be a target for the NASDAQ, which is around 1,000 points uh, from where we are now. So really, really got good opportunities coming up in the NASDAQ going forward. 
Okay, my key market for 2023 is going to be WTI crude oil. We have really a sophisticated picture unfolding from a fundamental perspective and also from a technical perspective. We're at a make and break area. So going going into the year, uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is USD strength. Now, always remember, as the USD gets stronger, a bullish USD, that means bearish commodity pricing. So if the USD does regain some of its swagger, uh, you're going to see bearish WTI pricing. On the flip side of that, a bearish US dollar is going to lead to bullish WTI pricing. So if the United States Federal Reserve does pivot off of that hawkish policy sometime in the spring, we may be in for a bullish bump there in WTI pricing. And the second is oil supplies. We always remember commodities are based on supply and demand. Oil supplies, the U.S. Strategic Petroleum Reserve is at 1985 levels, so there's a pending uh, oil shortage here developing in North America. And also OPEC output, remember, they were reduced by 2 million barrels per day back in October. And really looking forward, these, are, these cuts are to remain in place until the end of 2023. Um, of course, the X factor or more COVID lockdowns that will destroy demand and potentially be a bearish market driver. And also a global recession will also hamper demand and bring a little bit of bearish pressure to WTI. In my view, um, there's a much greater chance of the Fed pivoting uh, to, a, to a dovish policy and getting a bump there. And also that, that oil shortage here in the United States really developing as we get into the spring months. So I'm on the bullish side of the market. Uh, you can see right here, we're trading just beneath the key level. Uh, you've got the, your Russian invasion of the Ukraine, your high right there's a 100 or $129 a barrel and your Omicron scare, which is really where it all began for this, this current uptrend, and your low down there is 62.46. So uh, we're right around that 78% retracement somewhere in the neighborhood of 75, just north of the 75 to 77. I think that if we get reestablished above that level in Q1 of 2023, we may see an intermediate term bottom in and really start to grind towards that $100 mark. And now the third goal for 2023 is this, face your fears. In markets, there's all kinds of things that we actively always want to avoid, particularly if we've had any bad experiences. And what we really do need to do is actually stand up and actually face some of the specific problems that we have in our trading. Here's a few examples to get you started. It could be, and they're probably different for everybody, but here's potential things that you may want to think about. Fundamentals. Many people uh, get into trading and they download charting packages and they, they have a look at the fundamental economic landscape, but it feels too complicated. They don't really feel that they understand it or that they're going to be able to get a grasp of it. And so they just completely disregard it and they convince themselves that they don't need it. Really, really pay attention to the fundamentals. Take those steps to actively try to learn something about the market from a fundamental point of view. You will benefit immensely from it. And in the trading room every day, we help people slowly develop that knowledge so that they become better traders by understanding fundamentals. A second aspect could be this. Trading thin markets. Now, that's also another potential way of talking about bad trading experiences. And quite often there are certain markets uh, that people have a bad experience on. They maybe they lost a lot of money or they had too much leverage on and it was very volatile and therefore they avoid those markets. Don't do that. Make 2023 a year where you actually start to tackle some of those problems. Quite often I see people in the trading room and they say, I don't trade crude oil because it's very thin. I don't trade gold because it moves too quickly for me. That type of dialogue is shutting your brain down. Make a point of tackling some of the problems you have with that. You will become a better trader as a result. No question about that. And the third thing, The third thing is reviewing your trades. It's something that took me years to develop the discipline to actually do. And particularly after a bad week or a series of losing trades, it's very tempting to not want to show yourself, actually witness and look in detail at the things that you that didn't work out. It can feel very, very uncomfortable and very painful. But yet, ironically, that's usually what you really need to do to isolate the problems that you're having in your trading. So face that particular fear of actually going back and, and reviewing your trades properly. You'll benefit massively as a result. That's just a list to get you started. There's lots of different things that people do and don't do in trading. And I'm sure that you're able to think of some yourself, uh, but that could be a, a good uh, starting list for you. But yeah, for 2023, face your fears. 
market I'd like to focus on for 2023 is the euro against the dollar, the currency pair, primarily because of how uh, hawkish Christine Lagarde was in last week's ECB press conference. They hiked 50 basis points, bringing interest rates in Europe to 2.5%. She used the word significant several times, and her aggressive tone in that press conference really, really sets a very, very clear landscape for the euro moving into the new year. Far more aggressive in her tone than uh, the uh, Federal Reserve or the Bank of England. Uh, she said that the ECB was not uh, going to be pivoting. This was not, we shouldn't see 50 basis points as a, a pivot by the ECB. And there was more ground to cover. Uh, they, they had potentially longer to go than the Federal Reserve. That could really uh, make Euro dollar a very interesting play. She mentioned that there could be a potential 50 basis points in February and also March. So we could end up in a situation by Easter where the ECB is hiking more in, in larger increments than the Federal Reserve. Uh, that could put a lot of emphasis on euro dollar. So I like it uh, as, as, as an instrument to trade in the first quarter. I think we'll get good volatility on both sides of the market. I would draw your attention to the range that we are currently in uh, here from 107.88 uh, down to 103.49. I think that is going to be the key area to break out of in the, uh, the beginning of the new year. I'd also like to draw your attention to these blue dotted lines here. As we approach the end of 2022, those uh, dotted lines are the yearly closes in the market. Uh, there, there's two there, one from uh, the bottom one, 104.91 from the close of 2002, and then 105.15, the close of 2016. You'd be surprised at how much of a magnet uh, massive yearly closes can be at, in the last two weeks of the trading year as the as 2022 tries to find its, 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 its closing price. So th those are the first uh, uh, key areas that I'd I would focus on uh, towards the end of the year. From there, I'd like any drops down, any drop down that we get in euro dollar, really to not go any lower than 102. I would like to hold this month massive monthly support area, and then from there, that if we do hold that as support in the early part of January, I think that opens a potential rally up in euro dollar, which would take us beyond uh, beyond 107, uh, 60, 80, something like that, and then uh, that opens up an extended move up to the 1010 area. So I think it's the most interesting market for me uh, to potentially play between January and April. So that is the rundown of our goals for 2023 and a look at a few key markets that you might want to consider as we go into the new year. Hope you've enjoyed the content on the YouTube channel this year. Uh, so from myself, Shane, Connor and the rest of the team at How to Trade and Forex Signals, we wish you a very peaceful Christmas and a very prosperous new year.